Hello all, I have a bit of a quick note on today's video. Um, as I was writing it, it kind of just got a bit out of hand and kind of became sort of two videos in one. There's a bit of a link between the two sections, so uh, I would recommend watching it from the beginning. But if you really want to uh, just get to what the title explains, the fun, fake etymologies of America, then go to this timestamp. Hopefully I'll put some sort of timestamp there. But okay, on with the video. Hey, have you ever wondered where the word news comes from? As in the kind of information you read in papers and see on the television? Well, we actually have two ideas as to where it comes from. Both of these ideas is that news is an acronym. One idea is as an acronym of North, East, West, South, because news comes from all over the land. And the other idea is as an acronym of notable events, weather, and sports, as those are the key topics usually covered in the news. Though which one of these is the actual true origin of the word news. It has to be one of them, right? Well, no, neither of them are true. Both of these are purposefully made up ideas as to where the word news came from. This is something known as folk etymology. Folk etymology is when an idea for a word's origin seemingly sprouts out of nowhere with little to no evidence and gains traction. A lot of the time, these folk etymologies become more well known than the word's actual origins and get passed along from person to person, without any clue that they are spreading information that simply isn't accurate. To start with, these spread from people actually speaking to one another, but of course they are spread through written and spoken sources too. And in more recent times, they are spread online through social media sharing. It's a very good time in history to be a folk etymology right now. The term folk etymology was coined in 1852 by German historian, mathematician and linguist Ernst Fustermann. As he was German, the word was German initially too, being Fuchst etymology. It was then translated into English to become folk etymology. I imagine this name was chosen for these untrue word origins as folk has become something of an adjective meaning having unknown origins, like we see with folk tale, folklore and folk hero. And to me, folk etymologies conjure up the same sort of feeling and ideas that folk tales do too. Folk etymologies come about through all kinds of means. A lot of the time we don't know where exactly they come from. That's what makes them so troubling. However, sometimes we have more evidence as to where they come from. Words are given back formations, have acronyms applied to them, or are claimed to be named in someone's honor, or people just come to logical conclusions based on the word themselves. A great example is with hamburger. A lot of people presume that because hamburgers are a meat-based food and ham is a name for a kind of meat, then the name must come from there. However, hamburger's name has nothing to do with a pig's meat, but relates to the German city of Hamburg. A lot of the time, folk etymology is people simply filling in the gaps in information for themselves. Folk etymologies remain popular because, in all honesty, they're just pretty fun. Folk etymologies are a pretty neat, compact, fun, shareable story that makes you go, huh, that is interesting. In fact, they're usually so interesting and neat that you feel compelled to share them with other people, thus perpetuating the false narrative. Real etymologies, unfortunately, aren't that fun. A lot of words come from ancient, murky, unknown origins. Trust me, if all etymologies were as fun as folk etymologies, I'd be way more successful. Take the actual etymology of news. It comes from the adjective of new as news tends to be new events. This adjective came into English through old words of Germanic origin, like the Middle Dutch new and the Gothic neus, ultimately coming from the Proto-Indo-European nuo, but unknown beyond that. Like I said, this is nowhere near as fun as the folk etymology. No one is sharing that fact with their mates at the pub, or tweeting it with a shocked mood in hopes to get retweets. It's a pretty boring piece of information and the folk etymology is way more fun. And in all honesty, I really like folk etymologies. I know that might seem odd, in fact this whole video concept might seem strange. Name explains a channel all about finding the true origins of words, so a video focusing on fake etymologies might seem like a slap in the face. That's why we should only talk about folk etymology, as long as we iterate that these ideas or word origins aren't real and explain why they aren't real. Folk etymology however is a pretty big feature in language and does have linguistic importance in its own right. Folk etymology shows us just how creative people can be with language. The understanding people have of things like acronyms, back formation and eponyms to fill in the gaps of word origins. While folk etymologies aren't true, it's hard to argue that they aren't creative. And creativity in language is something that separates us from the rest of the animal world. I'd really recommend the book Word Myths by David Wilton if what I spoke about so far interests you. And it's from this book that I found out about the main folk etymologies I want to share with you all today. If you happen to be watching in the future, this video went live on the 3rd of July 2020, just one day before the 244th Independence Day of the United States of America. And to celebrate this fact, I want to share two popular folk etymologies that are attached to the name America. And of course, most importantly, explain why we know these etymologies aren't true. 
Before we talk about the folk etymologies, however, do we know the actual true origins of the name America? Well, yes. I actually made a whole video about the name many years ago, but let's have a quick recap of the facts before we step into the fiction. This name came about way before the USA was a thing, as remember, while this nation is known as America, so is the entire landmass it is on that contains not only the USA, but also Canada, Mexico, Brazil, Peru, Honduras, etc. This land is called the Americas and is usually split between the two continents of North and South America. The nation of the USA contains the word America because it's a series of states that are united on the landmass of America. The landmass of the Americas has the Italian explorer Amelio Vespucci to thank for its name. But why him exactly? When you think of people pivotal to the history of the Americas, I'm sure other names come to mind first. In example, Columbus. He named so much of this part of the world, and so much of this part of the world is named after him. Why not name the entire thing Columbus? Well, while Christopher Columbus arrived in the land before Amelio in 1492, he famously thought he had found another, faster route to Asia. Amelio Vespucci made two trips to the land after Columbus first in 1499 and again in 1501. It was a few years later in some letters he published that put forward a radical new idea that flew in the face of Columbus. Amerigo Vespucci hypothesized that the land Columbus quote unquote discovered was not a part of Asia, but rather entirely new land undiscovered by Europeans until then. And over time it was discovered that Vespucci was correct in his idea, and the land was its own continent and not a part of Asia. He dubbed this new land Novus Mundus, meaning New World. And of course the New World is a name the American did slash still do kind of go by, and this name of New World was coined by Amerigo, so he did name the land, but not after himself. It wouldn't be till 1507 that the land would be named after him. It was in this year that German cartographer Martin Waldseemoller published the brand new world map, which showed the new world as a separate entity. However, he also labelled this part of the world as America, in honour of Amerigo Vespucci, and from here the name has stuck around. This is the origin accepted by pretty much everyone, though as I said there are other theories. One of these were perpetuated by French geologist Jules Macou. He became convinced that the name America came from the Amerikou people and the Amerikou mountains in Nicaragua in Central America. Macou argued that Columbus had met these people and seen these mountains on his fourth visit to the land and took this name back to Europe with him. It sounds pretty convincing, right? Americu does sound an awful lot like America, and Columbus did visit and interact with these people. It makes all the sense in the world for this land to be named after people who live there, or a geographical feature like mountains, as many places are named after these things. Yet it simply isn't the case, and we believe this for a few reasons. First, we have no record of Columbus bringing this name back with him, and we have no proof of Columbus using the name Americu or anything like it. Also, the name Americu only came into use in Europe in 1874, just a year prior to Marco publishing his theory, and over 300 years after Vadsi Muller's map came out. It was first seen in Europe on a map by English scientist Thomas Belt, who labelled that part of Nicaragua as Amelicu. Belt didn't coin this word, it's of unknown native origins. Marku saw this map and ran with his theory. Years later, Belt even wrote to Marku and explained that he believed that the names of America and the Amelicu sounding similar is nothing more than a coincidence, and in all honesty, most people believe this too. Coincidences might seem boring, but sometimes that really is the case. Arguments being put forward that with the amount of native languages in the land at the time, it was inevitable that one of the words would sound like America. And other theories are that the spelling and pronunciation of Americu was influenced by Europe to sound more like America after that name had already been coined. While that's that etymology debunked, there is a second theory, and that is that it comes from the surname of a Bristolian merchant of the 15th century, Richard Emeric, whose surname you also find spelled like this too. What did Richard have to do with America? Well, we aren't exactly sure, but he seems to have played a role in the 1497 and 1498 voyages of John Cabot, the Italian who is seen as being the quote unquote discoverer of North America. In these expeditions, it's thought America had something to do with finances, as the evidence we have of him is from him signing Cabot's pension payment. This theory gained traction in 1908 thanks to Bristol historian Alfred E. Hudd. His primary evidence is a city record dating back to 1497, talking about Cabot's journey and calling the land America. This was in 1497, and Vespucci visited the land for the first time in 1499, and it was named after him in 1507, so this was way before Amerigo visited America. And as this voyage included some of the name Americ and called the land America, Hudd put two and two together and theorised that this could be where the name actually comes from, as it predates Vespucci's voyages and Valtzi Muller's map. However, it doesn't actually predate Vespucci's 
voyages or Volti Muller's map. The 1496 city record HUD pointed to as evidence had been lost and HUD was actually using a record from 1564 that summarized the lost 1497 record. By 1565, America was a commonly used name for the New World, so in summarizing the 1497 record, the name was retroactively used, hence what it seemed like the name America was in use before America's travels. And just to add to this, that 1565 record was destroyed in a 1565, so the evidence that America was named after Richard Americ comes from an old lost document that talked about an even older lost document. I'm sure you can see why this etymology is so thoroughly debunked, despite how plausible it seems. Once again, America and Americ sounding similar is just a big old coincidence. So it seems pretty conclusive that America is named after Amerigo Vespucci, but nevertheless these folk etymologies about the Amerigo people slash mountains and Richard Americ are pretty fun stories, despite the fact they aren't true. As I said, I do really enjoy folk etymologies, they're fun to look at and see how human brains have come to somewhat logical conclusions for word origins. However, like I also said, when we talk about folk etymologies, we must emphasize that this is a folk etymology and not mistake it for the truth and spread misinformation. Sometimes folk etymologies are hard to detect, so always have your wits about you when hearing any information you might find suspicious, especially from tools like myself blabbering away on the internet. I'm not a valid source of information, but my sources hopefully are. We live in a time where false information is more rife than ever, and sometimes there can even be false information in our etymologies. Thank you to all my patrons who support Name Explain on a monthly basis. Name Explain depends on small monthly donations from fans like you to help keep the channel running. Just a small amount of $2 a month helps in a huge way, grants you patron exclusive Name Explain extras, and gets your name here with all these awesome people. Thank you. Hello all and thank you so much for reaching the end of the video. Check out another video and subscribe to stay in the loop on all things Name Explain. You can follow myself on Twitter at NameExplainYT. Follow me there and tweet the name Christopher at me so you came from this message. Anyway, I hope you enjoyed this video and once again, thank you all so much.